Hey everybody, it's good to see you all again. This segment is just to kind of let you guys know what is going on in this episode. So in this episode, there is a situation um, towards the end or anywhere in this episode, there is a blank. That means there's no sound coming in the episode. And you might think that is your fault. That is my fault. You can blame me, say it was my fault because that is editing problem and that's because of recording and the recording platform that I use. If that happens to be in the in the episode, if that's in it, um, what you need to do is to just disregard it. Don't worry about it. Consider it like an ad break. Consider it like a break. Consider it like we're taking a five minute break. Consider it like that. So no freaking out. No need to worry. Make sure you guys enjoy the episode. Enjoy what's in it. And y'all have a good one. And enjoy this one. Really enjoy it and have fun. And please disregard the blanks in there because other than breaks. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. And thank you guys for understanding and for your cooperation. Get in here and stop recording. Oh, now he is. You'll get punished later. Um, hi, everybody. If you guys heard, mm-hmm. I was talking to the bot. I, he was getting on my nerves. Anyway, I'm here with Luminary. She is an incredible musician. I'm so psyched to have you. I don't have a lot of girls in this podcast, but when I do, it's legendary whenever I can get a girl. It's mostly guys, so it's good to, you know, get to, get some change. Welcome to Rapid Out. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm so stoked to get to have this time to meet you. I know that we've had some difficulties in the past getting this together, but I'm so stoked that this was a perfect time. I'm so stoked. Oh, yeah, it's no problem. Everything has this uh, perfect time. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, so, firstly, there's new people that watch the show every week. So, would you mind reminding them about what you have to bring to the table? Okay. Uh, so, uh, I'm a recording artist, a recording performer, performing artist. I've been a recording artist for around four years now, but I uh, started getting some traction earlier this year when I dropped uh, a single with my uh, friend, Baby G. It's called American Psycho, and that is on all streaming platforms, and there's a video on YouTube that's gotten around 400,000 views so far, so it's pretty sick. You should definitely check it out. Oh, awesome, awesome. Firstly, congrats on that video. Congrats, 400,000. That is pretty big, not going to lie. Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah, all, about the, all about the promo. Yes, 100%. It's all about that promo. If you don't promote yourself, how are you supposed to grow, right? How are you supposed to get up there? Yes, it. yes, yes. yes. All right, thanks for that little tidbit. Let's jump into everything. Um, firstly, um, I want to exactly know because I because this is like an every time. Well, not really every time. It's just a good start, especially for people that are brand new to being here. Um, what sort of inspired you to be in music or to even uh, pursue an interest in music? Well, I've been. Uh playing instruments since I was about, I want to say maybe three. I got a, I got a piano for um, Christmas and I taught myself how to play by ear. And then around middle school, I learned uh, bass guitar. And in high school, I didn't really do too much, but I did start writing music and doing poetry. And once I graduated, there was this um, group in my school that wanted me to or more like a collective, less of a group, and they wanted me to join the collective because they uh they liked my lyricism. So that's kind of what like kicked off me being like a a recording artist. Mm-hmm. I've also um done producing in the past, like an engineer, uh, well enough to record myself and uh, other people, but not I can't really do any fancy shit. <laughs> That's true. Um, that's pretty cool. So music was always in your blood. Then I mean, 
The piano, I love piano. Everybody should know that I love piano. I love the melody and the, and the sound of pianos. I get really emotional every time I hear one. So that's really something that you would really bless on my days. If you came to my house and you played the piano, I literally would burst in tears, literally. <laughs> I mean, not, I'm not too great at it anymore, but I could uh, play that one Two Chain song. No, I think it's different. I'm different. There's just like four different notes. Mm. All righty, that is awesome. You don't have to be an expert um, pianist. Um, I've met people that have just begun playing instruments and they're talented in different ways. So you definitely fit in right here. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, and it just seems like music must have been a part of you. It's a part of you. You've been doing it, what, for a long time. And even when you left school, you still pursue a career in music. And now you've got this whole, um, now you got this whole thing going. I mean, how does that make you feel like now that you're a musician and you're looking back on life? How do you feel about that? Looking back on life, I'm definitely glad this is uh, what I decided to do. I feel like I have more freedom as an individual because, like, you know, I'm an artist. So if I do anything weird or, like, some crazy shit, it's just like, oh, no, she's an artist. It's all right. You know? So um, definitely, it's definitely freeing. Um, but it is difficult. And sometimes I do wish I decided to do something a little bit easier. But... Uh, at the end of the day, making music is like what I love to do and it makes me happy and like traveling and doing shows, like it's just uh it's definitely worth all the all the blood, sweat and tears. Yes, 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 yes. That is the truth hundred percent. If it's something you love then it's worth every single moment of your life. Hundred percent. Definitely worth it. And I love that you just kept going. Um you kept you kept going because of your interest. I love that. That's really amazing. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And you really sound like the shy girl, even though your Instagram you don't really look like. But you're kind of like like a like a two sided almost that kind of thing. You know about two sided people. Well, not really two sided. Like, I guess like you, um in and out kind you, of thing. Are you calling me a Gemini? Is that what you're trying to do? No, no, no. That's, a, uh, that's exactly what I am. <laughs> It'd be fair. Oh yeah, it's just you. Just sound like a really, um, well, not really shy person. Like I guess like a quiet, focused person. But I look on your Instagram, and you don't look anything. Well, well, you're beautiful, but um, you don't really like have the typical look of um that kind of person, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I get what you mean, for sure. Um, definitely, definitely. I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm shy. I am very, uh, I do have anxiety, so I do get very anxious. And um, typically when I go out, I keep to myself and, like, my group of friends. But um, at the same time, I like, I like, like, you know, dressing up and standing out and stuff because fucking, uh, I love clothes and, like, fashion and things like that, so. Yeah, I can tell you, you go all and out for fashion, especially the pictures you take and your profile pic, you went all and out with the purple background and all that going on, I can tell. Thank you. I actually edited that myself. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I used to do graphic design in high school. Had an art, had an aunt who um worked for McCormick, and she did graphic design. So she taught me how to um, do editing and stuff when I was interested in it in school. Oh, that is sick. That is amazing. Wow. <laughs> I ask you to do some, some art later, some cover art. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, uh, most of the songs I've put out, except for American Psycho, I've done the cover art. I don't really know how to do a 3D art, but the song I just dropped, I did that cover art. Any songs you see on SoundCloud, I did the cover art. Um, Mm -hmm. And there's another song I have out called Faded. I didn't I didn't do that cover art actually. My friend did that one. But um I definitely uh 
had some input in it. So. Ah, that is awesome. Props to you. That's amazing. <laughs> Dude, I can barely do graphic design. I have to use, I have to fucking use a website. You've got all of, all that going. Props to you. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Look at that. I love all that. I love it. I'm sorry. I know I'm big, but I just love all that. I love artists that have like multiple talents. That's like, you actually, that's actually a bonus. It's actually a bonus. No, oh, thanks. Yeah, of course. That's a huge bonus if you got all that going. That's a huge bonus. That's a huge one. Um, all right. I'm going to dim it down. Uh, I'm going to dim it down. I'm sorry. I'm too much. Um, no, you're fine. Sweet. Now, I just want to jump into music because that's what we're here for. Um. So now that we know kind of who you are as a person, now I want to exactly I hate stuttering. Anyway, um I'm stoked to know um what is your way of music? What's the whole process of uh music for you? Like um songwriting, you know, production, like what's your whole process of doing all that into developing a complete song? It varies from song to song, for sure. Um, typically, uh, I go to the studio and I'll either, excuse me, I'll either go through, uh, beat packs that I get or I'll find YouTube beats that I like and essentially I'll do reference tracks over them, which is like short, maybe like three or four takes and then, uh, that's it, I'm done and I move on to the next song and I'll usually get about anywhere between three to six songs done in the session, depending on how much time I have. So like around four hours, I can knock out six songs, two hours, maybe like a, maybe like three or four. And then I, um, I keep those and I come back to them later, like the ones I like the best. And I either add more to them or they're finished and I just get them mixed and mastered. And then uh, with songwriting, um, I'm writing like constantly. Like I'm either writing on my phone and my notebook and what I like to do is uh just uh write whatever comes to my head and just write them anywhere, write them everywhere. I sometimes actually write lyrics on my pants. And um when it comes <laughs> down to yeah, I'll just I'll just draw my pants really quick. I actually have like three pairs of pants dedicated to just me writing lyrics on them so that way I don't mess up all my clothes. Um <clears throat> And then when I have a session and I'm working on one singular song, um, I'll piece together different lyrics that I've written and uh, create a song from that. So all of my songs are kind of like a Frankenstein's monster. But uh, it usually works out pretty well. Um, sometimes I do write on the spot when I uh, want to have something more meaningful and less freestyled. And what was what was the other question? You you said a uh, recording process, songwriting, and I want production. Okay, production. Um, yeah, with production. I usually leave that to my engineers. Um, on occasion, uh, when there's a beat being made, I will help out with like uh, bass lines, um, guitar riffs, uh piano loops and things like that but i'm i'm i, I usually leave it to the uh, engineers because they can get it done a lot faster and they know what i'm doing and um they know what i'm doing they know what they're doing and uh i forgot damn oh. she's gone just like that train of thought <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh but yeah there's just one engineer i work with he's awesome his name is russell and um what he does is uh, he'll come up with loops on the spot. I uh, get to pick which one I like the best, and he'll beat. A, he'll build a beater on that in fifteen minutes, and it's done. Entire like an entire beat done in fifteen minutes. He's actually like he's amazing. Oh, got to meet this guy soon. <laughs> got to meet him. 
So that's pretty unique, and I especially was very blown away by the fact you write lyrics on your hands, like, like, like not, 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 you know, being judged or anything. Um, that's like crazy. She goes far as writing like on pants, and I love it. it's clever that you do it so you, you don't like forget. Yeah, no, my my short term memory is absolute dog shit, so I kind of have to like if I can't write it down right away or make a voice memo right away, it's gone and I'll never get it back. So um, I've lost like too many like good lyrics and good melodies, waiting till I got home to write something or my phone's dead and I can't record it. So just just fuck it, just write on my pants. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that that makes perfect sense. Sense. I really wish I did that. I wish I did. I'm a songwriter myself, and I lost so many lyrics because my computer acts up. It's bullshit sometimes. So I did not. Con- I did not ever think to do it on my pants. I will consider buying more pants. So I will do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll buy more. No, I just always think that it's a good idea to have uh, physical and digital copies of everything, so you don't lose them. Yes, 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 yes. You have a you have a big brain right there. Big brain. Thanks. Yeah, of course. And oh, everybody, whenever someone says um something smart, um, not like attitude smart, like someone um says like actual fact, you're supposed to say big brain. We're gonna make that a new trend. Big brain. Okay. Okay, okay I can get with that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I did the term all the time in school. Um, whenever someone got the question right, he say "big brain." Um, <laughs> whenever I would get a question right, they say "big brain." Uh, <laughs> it's nice. hilarious. Trend study. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm out of breath. <laughs> no, you're good. <sighs> all right. Um. Now, this is a really important question. Seriously. Um, okay. I want to know overall, as a musician yourself, how would you, um, as a musician, describe your music? Describe my music? Yeah. Um, I don't really like to label things. I actually hate labels. I think they're tedious and um, a distraction. But I have had my music labeled as sultry, grunge, uh, alternative pop it just depends on what i'm making because i can make a a variety of genres actually like i can go from making hooks for rap songs to rapping to making uh pop punk to grunge kind of like uh nirvana is a really big inspiration for me so kind of like on a more like uh i guess softer way that they did their grunge at least some of the songs and then um the songs that I make that I put out for my individual works of art are definitely along the alternative pop, um, indie, R&B side. It's like a hodgepodge. Hodgepodge? How do you see that? <laughs> but I actually respect you 100%. A lot more now that I know that you do. You're pretty much like an everything artist almost. Those are kind of artists that they basically do any genre and they can't really be classified in just one. Yeah, like, I just like I, to make art, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I love that you don't just classify yourself in just one genre. You're like everywhere. Yeah, you know, Jay-Z, I think Jay-Z tried every genre until something, like, stuck and started blowing up, and then he just stuck with uh, rapping. I can't imagine him doing country, though. Like, I try to think about it, and I can't, like, at all. Like, I can't even, like... like let's make it clear that that will never happen. Let's, oh, let's I hope be not. honest. Let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> that will never happen. Yeah. The reason why you can envision that is it's because it will never happen. <laughs> it will never happen, ever. And if he does, though, I'm going to stop listening to Beyonce. I will stop listening. Well, you can't. You can't penalize Beyonce. I'm going to do like one song just to punish him. 
I'm going to do it once just to punish him. <laughs> I don't think he's going to do it. He's he's really in hip-hop now, so I think he'll be sticking there for a very long time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yes. Yes, he is. All right. Um, excuse me. I forgot my question. Now, um, I, I, I know this, and everybody knows. Everybody has had some type of boost, someone that got helped them get up there. Um, so who do you exactly look up to when it comes to being a musician? Uh, I would say my best friend, uh, Baby G. Uh, he's, he's definitely the one that's gotten me to go as far that, as I have so far. Uh, actually, just prior to meeting him, I was going to stop doing music because I felt like I was wasting my time. and. Um, I was his assistant uh, for maybe like a solid two months, but I was really bad at it. So instead, we just like were best friends since we got along really well. And um, while I was being his assistant, I didn't want to get paid. I wanted to learn how he got to where he is currently and like uh, basically like, you know, get connections, get basically uh, have a mentor. And um I was really, like, inspired by him because he was able to get booked for Rolling Loud with no management, like, nothing. Like, he did that by himself. So I thought it was, uh, I thought he'd be pre- someone pretty good to look up to. Mm. And that was around uh, two years ago, I think. Mm. Oh. Uh, okay, that is, like, that's, that's crazy that a boy could have you overthink yourself and not consider music. That's that's like pretty big. I mean, what's well, let's no, not... no. I, I, what I was saying is like me, like I did the I did the collective. I was in that for about a year and a half. It broke up because of like internal drama. Um, it was definitely my fault, <laughs> but <laughs> we're not gonna get into that. And um, and I was just, like, working. Like, I was doing regular nine-to-fives. I worked at Starbucks, and I worked at Whole Foods. And then I was just kind of, like, I'm not doing music, not really writing, not really recording or anything. And then um, he had he had tweeted that he needed an assistant. And I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. I just got fired. And <laughs> that's, pro- like, that's what got me back into music. Like, that's what made me, like, want to focus and, like, actually like, put my all into it. Mm. That's pretty cool that um, he actually inspired you. That's really cool. And helped you keep going. That's really cool. Yeah, for sure. That's really dope, actually. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And then I would say, like, uh, artists that I look up to that are, like, you know, it's already made it and blown up and everything. I would say... Kurt Cobain is, uh, is a favorite for sure. And then also X. And I think that has to do with more so like uh, how he lived his life and then was able to turn it around. And um, I live in South Florida, so like he's really big down here. So he was definitely another inspiration. Mm-hmm. And then like watching him blow up like while I was in high school and like he, I think he maybe was like a year older than me, or maybe two. And it's just like watching somebody my age that's in the same state as me, like literally same county, all that shit just blow up, like be able to do it. And it's just like, oh shit, I want to do that. Yeah, I want to do that too, young age. Yeah. I definitely would like to. Yeah. Don't sleep on that. It, it could happen. You don't really know. Yeah. It could most definitely happen. I love to see that happen. And if it does, you might rem- you might want to remember me because if of course I'll come back and do an interview. Oh yes, yes. But... Oh, not just interviews, just getting me perks. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I gotta take everybody oh, yeah. with me. Yay! 
okay? And if you get a huge touring, you should visit Texas. If you're in the if if you if you're in the U.S., you should visit Texas. I live in H Town, so I would love to see you pourings um, one day. Oh, of course, yeah. I love to go to Texas and check it out. Actually, um, I think we're gonna have a show out in uh, Arizona next month. All the details are still being like you know uh, worked out, but if everything's pretty good, I will be out in Arizona for a show. And uh, I'm trying to, well, not me alone, but uh, me, Baby G, and then uh, uh, one of our friends, Killer K, she does shows up in Philly. We're trying to set up a Northeast tour, and then after that, work on each, like, you know, section of the U.S. Wow, that is awesome. That is incredible. I can't wait to see that. And I might actually have something for you that you guys can start, like, prepping. I would be sick. Oh, yeah. I'm actually throwing a virtual thing right here. And um, the virtual event can help you prep for touring. Because it's it's sort of like touring. Yeah. It's sort of like it. Um, So, yeah, it's something I'm throwing. Um, If you want more info, I can give you some later. Oh, for sure, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll just I'll just message you the info. Um, lucky I got you in time. The deadline was Saturday, so. Okay, but yeah. It, Perfect time. Awesome. Awesome. I'd love to see you three come up with something big. Blow me away. I'd love to see you guys blow me away. Oh, for sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. Make sure it blows all away. gonna make me so happy yeah it's definitely gonna be lit definitely um anything art related i like to put my all into it yay sounds awesome um i'm loving all of this all right now it's time for a switch excuse me this is the time i love to get artists because they always have questions about something or someone this is your time to ask me anything you want because I know you want to ask me something um, or dare me something. This is your time to. Okay. Uh, uh, um, oh, man. Like my mind's blank. Well, uh, how long have you been making music? Because you, uh, you mentioned earlier that you're also a songwriter. Oh, good question. I've done music for a very long time. When I was little, about five, I started, actually, I'm going to take it back a few. My parents, they loved music. They wanted us to be into music. So they would play us old records. And so I knew Tupac and I knew Lauryn Hill. I knew the Beatles. I knew um, I knew all those old hits. Um And when I was five, I did singing. I started to sing, and I loved to sing. I did choir um, for many years, about seven, six years. Um, Then, 2019 was the first was the was the year I did rap. Not actually rap, like write rap music. When I was um, God, when I was in fifth grade, I started to do songwriting. I started to keep notebooks in my notebook and write lyrics until um, I got my electronics and I could start doing it online. But um, then, excuse me, um, two years ago, I started to write rap music because um, I just found it interesting. Okay, sick. Yes, yes, yes. So music is a part of my blood, it's a part of my life. So you could say I'm very musically, get it? Get it? <laughs> yeah. Buddy. No, yeah, I get it. Oh, that's cool. I guess I grew up in a uh, in a music household too. My mom likes to listen to pretty much everything. Like I've listening to. I mean, I would say everything except for country and hard rock. I had to get into that myself. But named after Lauryn Hill, Sade. I grew up on Sade, Coldplay. Um, what else? Erica Badu. Common. Uh, James Blake is definitely a favorite of mine. So, definitely have like a lot of um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
a lot of different influences in my music that I like to try to combine into one. So definitely coming from a music background is uh, it's pretty sick. Oh, cool. That is awesome. Awesome. Major pop, major props to you. Oh, yeah, you too. Man. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Come on, throw some more at me. Huh? How about some more? Okay, Um, another question. Um. So what made you get into podcasting? Awesome question. I got bored last year. You know, everybody knows. Last year was the year of the pandemic and I got bored. I got kind of sick of just sitting around doing nothing. Um, I just wanted to find something to do and I tried everything. Trust and believe me, 100%, I tried everything. Um, and I could not find anything until we talked about doing a show. And TV was out of the question because it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, and then we had an idea. Well, he suggested, my friend, he said podcasting. And I did, I did. After the first episode I did, the first in the interview I did was a group one I did. Um, I started doing them for fun. And then this year came up and we crossed season one. Well, actually, we were still in the middle of it. Um, I realized that I wanted to do this seriously because the artists that was that I was getting, they really did care about these interviews. They really did care about getting the music. And if it was like, oh God, I feel bad. I don't want to do this just for fun. I've got to do this a serious thing. So sure, I expanded from doing just rap to doing um, just everyone so everybody gets a chance to expand and grow together and i've been helping and promoting artists um ever since so yeah okay cool yes yes it is come on tell some more tell some more you can't be empty now oh no every time you ask me to ask you a question my mind goes blank why do you not every time you're just like come on give me a question everything's gone like out the window um <laughs> come on don't be a baby oh no uh i had one i did news. oh yeah okay i remember so what okay so first question have you listened to any of my music yes i had your um your profile showed up as um a recommendation and i looked okay. at a lot of your music first of all it's really incredible um, I was blown away by it, and usually I'm not blown away, but what I am is an amazing feeling. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, wh- which song is your favorite? Um, honestly, though, when... Uh, I've got that question so many times. <laughs> honestly, though, I hate that question, because it's so hard to pick a favorite. Um, it's so hard to pick a favorite, because I loved a lot of them. It, they were so amazing. Um, they were so amazing, but um, I think one of my favorites is Sakura. Uh, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Sakura. Um, Sakura is uh, one I watch Sakura. a lot. Okay. Yeah. You heard that one on SoundCloud first? Usually when somebody asks me, I usually look on SoundCloud first because I'm already on SoundCloud already, so I just listen there. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Nice. Yes. Because uh, I've dropped a, I was just asking because I dropped a new version of the song. Because the one that was on SoundCloud was actually a pre release that wasn't mixed or mastered yet. So. Oh, that is awesome. That was the one I dropped this Friday. And, uh, it's the first single I've dropped. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of my rollout. So I should have an album coming out uh, sometime in November. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so stoked. So, come on, throw some more, throw some more. Give up, yeah. Uh, another question, another question. What's the, uh, what's the music scene like in Houston? What? 
was the music scene like in Houston, like the underground? Scene? Oh, okay, good question, good question. Um, so it is a lot of pop music. Just gotta say, um, um, it's pop music. It's actually pop, R and B, rap. Um, sometimes rock music comes on there. Sometimes, um, the only a uh, country is a very small thing. And sometimes okay. reggaeton also reggaeton's um also good and K pop also is um also vibes in here. Okay, cool. What's yeah. uh do you have any favorite local artists that I should check out? A uh, local art oh god. Uh, I don't know a lot of local artists. I don't know a lot of them. Um God. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. My brain's literally going blank. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. That's happened to me like what seven times in like the last twenty minutes. Oh really? <laughs> no, yeah. Every question, mine completely empty. No thoughts, nothing. Oh wow. <laughs> oh my god, you make me laugh. I haven't laughed as well since earlier earlier in physics class and physics. <laughs> Physics, oh man, I fucking love physics. It's actually one of my favorite subjects. I'm ass at math, oh, but I can do physics. Ah, oh, that is cool. That's cool. I, I love science courses, except biology. Fuck, fuck biology. I hate it. Really? Mine was chemistry. I couldn't stand the math and chemistry. Like, I fucking hated it. Biology yeah. was, biology was all right. It's pretty easy. Uh, That's and, easy. I just don't like it. Ah, so. okay, yeah. I just don't like it. I like chemistry. I like physics. I like those. And I was hoping next year, like, I get like aquatic science or something else. Oh, that'd be sick. You're in, um, uh, you're in college. You could say that. I'm not gonna reveal any personal stuff, but I'm gonna just say for now, you could say that. <laughs> okay. No, I was just asking because uh, I tried college. I tried college twice. Uh, first time I tried it, I lasted about a month and a half. And then I dropped out. And then the second time I tried it, I didn't get past filling out the fast book. So. Oh. Oh, wow. So you tried college twice. So are you planning to go back? Or are you planning to make music like a permanent thing? I know, definitely music's going to be a permanent thing. And um, probably will never go to college uh, until I have the money to pay for it out of pocket. And then I'd probably just take like, various music classes and like art theory and stuff like that. Oh. Oh, all right, all right. I respect that. I respect that. I respect that. It's opposite. I've got um like college is like a like a required thing for me. I'm actually studying a few things. Okay. Yep. Oh those are more those are more. All right. Um, what is your favorite genre of music to create? Um, honestly, my favorite has to be rap because when I write rap music, it feels like I can tell more of myself versus writing pop music. Because in pop music, um, you write you don't write long verses like you do in rap. I feel like rap more um when I write rap verses, it feels like I can tell more about the story and about um more what um in rap and I can and I can keep it fun. I can keep it interesting. I can keep it um I can keep it good for the ear. Um I can keep it all good. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I dig that for sure. I think rap music is actually probably the hardest genre of music for me to make. Yeah, like 100%. Can, yeah, like I can come up with hooks for days and I can write verses and things like that, but actually rapping and like trying to freestyle or like trying to come up with something that doesn't sound corny is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know, understand why it's so hard when it is. Man, I totally get that 100%. Trust me, I've interviewed musicians younger than you. I get it. Trust me, I get it. <laughs> okay, how old do you think I am? 
Um, tell me by your Instagram pages, you are either you're definitely hell no, not over 30. You're not you're definitely <laughs> not 30, but you probably are probably 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, you know, I'm 22. I didn't know if you're gonna like go through all the 20s and see if you're just gonna be like 22, 23, 24. 24. I was about to do that. You didn't give me time. I was oh, about sorry. to. Sorry. Give me... Damn it, you didn't give me time. I killed the joke thing. Do you have a knack for that? Damn it. <laughs> Hey, 22 is not bad. You almost got to 25. That's an accomplishment. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to get that discount on my car insurance. It's going to be so sick. Yay. Yay. You get the discount. Yes, sir. No, no, yes, 20, I, I think 20s are probably the hardest age. I wouldn't really know because I haven't been, like, you know, beyond 20 when I just started. But so far, it's a complete train wreck. Well, yeah, it's it's a lot when you're 20 because like you're starting to live out life and it's bumpy. I, bumpy. Um, the easiest will probably be like when you reach 40 or 50 because then you're like, you you already know how life is, so you can settle and relax and. Yeah, you're kind of like in stride. Yeah. yeah, and then 30 is like the middle. It's hard, but it's getting easy. No, yeah, I think I, think I can agree with that. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But it's a good thing if people know, so at least they're not freaked out when life and shit happens. And you'd be like, I should have listened to this podcast. I should have listened. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, like the, we I'm were sorry. talking about. No, no, my bad. Uh, Earlier we were talking about the, you were telling me about the Grammys because I don't really watch much of the award shows. Um, did the Grammys happen this year already? I mean, I would think so. We're in October. Wait, wait, what? Like maturity? No, the, the Grammys actually if they happened already. And then I said, I, well, I'd hope so because we're already at, uh, in October. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Grammys happen, like, early in the year. They happen in, like, Feb- in January, February. This year, it's it happened in March. It's supposed to be in January, February. It already happened for this year. Okay, okay. Yeah, so and did, then they have what did you, period. What did you think about sorry. it? Sorry, um, were you talking? I'm sorry. I uh, said, so what did you think about the uh, the Grammys this year? Oh, good question. Good question. I'm gonna get right into it. It was good, but it was very unfair. In so many ways, it was very unfair. It's very unfair. For one thing, people should know BTS should have won a Grammy. Let's just be real. They should have won one. Oh yeah, for sure. No, they their stands and then like they work their ass off. It's insane. Yes, yes, and they have dedicated fans. They have the biggest fans in the world. They could get, and it's so like crazy. They get over millions of views within hours, like within an hour, like damn, within an hour, they could get millions of views and likes. That's how dedicated fans are. They love BTS. They love all that. No, yeah, I've seen like on Twitter. They're relentless. Like, I've. I hope, not I hope, I wish I can have stands, like fans that that dedicated by the time they blow up. I think it'd be awesome to be able to reach and impact that many people. Yeah, yeah. That was really unfair. And then, um, let me really take a look at the Grammys. Party Me and Megan Thee Stallion's performance was... A little inappropriate, so that's why people were dissing about it. Uh. It was a little inappropriate because they were doing strip dancing and they were twerking on the bed. Um, that kind of shit. Um, that was okay. Megan went home with three Grammys, which was kind of unfair because there was like so many other people. Um, so there's only other people that should have won instead of her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Who, and then, uh, Pete, oh, sorry. I was going to say, who are some of the artists that you think should have gotten some Grammys? Oh, uh, good <laughs> question. Good question. Firstly, I should point out, um, I Rich and the Baby should have won one that night for Rockstar. They should have won one. Um, Time, I wish they could have won one. They're really good. Um, let me take a look. Uh, Julia Michaels, that song is really good. I wish they could have gotten one. Um, God, I'm trying to think there were so many. Um, I'm trying to really think. Um, Ariana Grande should have gotten one for Stuck With You. That song was, like, legendary. Um, yeah, for sure. But she, but she did end up getting a Grammy. I just I just think they should have gotten one for that song instead of just for their separate things. God, there's so many. I just kind of forgot about the Grammys this year, so I'm, <laughs> I'm kind I'm of... for sure. It was definitely a while ago. Yeah. But overall, it was average. I'll definitely have to check out the Grammys next year to see. Oh, yeah. Well, great news. The period to submit your music has ended for the Grammy. So next month, you will get their nominations. Then I think the Grammys will happen in January or February. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. All right, you got any more for me in that tank? Um, not that okay I can you're not. think of. I don't think I can, uh, no, I've really just been, like, pulling, pulling questions out of the air. Uh, all righty. All righty, that's perfect, that's perfect. I know you are having a new single coming out. Is there anything that your fans should know that's coming from you? Anything they can look forward to? Let us know what's going to happen in the future. Okay, cool. So I'll be dropping a single with a video company company it or however you say that um october 15th and then uh november 29th i'll be dropping my first ever uh solo project so definitely i think something to look forward to and then i have uh some shows coming up in south florida uh next month and then uh what is it what state is that? Arizona and Arizona in November. So definitely looking forward to going out there. I've never been over there. And then uh, the showcase, uh, your showcase. Awesome, awesome. And I sent you the info. It'll be the end of October. Okay, cool. Yep, I'm so stoked. I'm so excited for all those new products coming. So excited. Thank you. I'm definitely going to check out uh, your previous podcast and everything, too. And uh, awesome, awesome. looking forward to hearing this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because of the sketch, uh, because of the long way to schedule, you might have to wait a couple months. Oh, that's no problem. And just uh, let me know so that I can um, do all the uh, promo beforehand. That way. It's like yeah. really chill. It's like it's like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> I've done I think I've I wanna say this is maybe my second or third interview that I've done. Other than like, you know, various job interviews and all that shit. But Oh, uh, you've done music interviews before. Yeah, I think uh my first one that was years ago. I don't even I think it was after a show or something and then the last one I did was earlier this year. Maybe around June or August? June or, no, that's not how the months were. July or August. Um, I did one after a show that I did in Philly. Uh, so. Mm. Haven't seen that one, though. I wonder if we got loose. <laughs> oh, we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. No, for sure. We'll definitely see. We'll definitely see. That's exciting, exciting. We cannot wait for all that new stuff coming. 
Um, thank God, I want to thank you so much for being here. This was such a great time to do this. Um, unfortunately, um, I have to all go. Aww, no, it's okay. Thanks for having me. Uh, of course, I'm so happy that you could make it. Um, and this was a good time. You're so chill, you're so relaxed. I'm loving all this. Um, and I wish nothing but the best of you. Um, I thank you a lot for being here. That means a lot to me that you would show up and you be here to support me. That's really huge. Of course. I think it's really so cool what you're doing. And I wish I had the, had the dedication and the organization to be able to run a podcast. Because uh, I was actually really surprised that you had like the whole scheduling and everything and very professional, very organized. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. But you get used to it once you've done it for a while. And wow, you wanted to do something like this, huh? Um, I've always thought about doing a podcast, but I was never sure if people were interested in hearing me talk about things. So never really got around to doing it. That and I don't have the. Uh, the organization skills or dedication to be able to do multiple things like like I'm like all in in music and I feel like if I were to do anything else something's gonna lack so well how are you gonna know if you don't try how are you supposed to know and if you really are interested I mean you could practice by I don't know taking a little time here um because telling from all that, I mean, you could practice just, I don't know, <laughs> being here with me. Okay. That'd be cool. It's something I'm definitely open to doing. Oh, because I've, because it's a lot. Um, but wow, you really be open to come co host, really? Yeah. Sure. I think it'd be pretty cool. And you wouldn't, like, bail out or anything or, like, have complications with time? Uh, no, my schedule is usually pretty open as long as I find out maybe, like, three days in advance. Uh, I'm one of those okay. people that wake up with no plan, and then by 12 o'clock, I have, like, 17 different things to do. Um, makes sense, makes sense. Got it. Yeah. Uh, okay. But well, yeah, I'll just uh, looking... let me know. Yeah, I mean that'd be so exciting. I actually, um, don't worry. You're not gonna start. And you're not. Gonna, you're not gonna start. I was just about to say I have one. I'm not gonna ask you to do one like now, but um, that's actually pretty sick. Um, actually pretty cool. I will definitely um look into you co-hosting. That'd be really cool, and you get to technically be on the podcast. You technically get to be on one, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. It's yes. exciting. I'm excited. I'm sorry. I'm very. I'm a very dry person, <laughs> but I am excited. Oh yeah, me too. Me too. And it's all right. It's all right. You are practicing. I'll be the main one talking, and you'll just um, you'll pop in with questions and things to say. Um, like I have a I have a couple of co-host is us gone. I have another one by Lano. He's an amazing producer. Um, you might want to hit him up sometime if you're ever um, in the mood. Um, Not for sure. Not for sure. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's his Instagram. It's called Lano Production. L-O-N-L Lano Productions. Um, you should check him out. He's also the other co-host. Um, I usually have Jack and Ecstasy, but they haven't been here. So I would love to have a girl alongside me, and you get really nice company. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm interested. Definitely would like to try it out. For sure. Awesome, awesome. I'll do some thinking, and if I want to jump forward, I will make a giant announcement on social media. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, again, I thank you a lot for being here, um, for joining me. This is really incredible. Um, 
and you know keep being yourself keep being you i want to see more stuff from you um we do unfortunately have to you know do that thing i'm just kidding we don't have to stop <laughs> It's just a good stopping point for now. Do yeah, you have sure. any things you would like to say to the audience before you head off? Um, uh, go to school if you feel like you should. You definitely don't do drugs. And if you do, do it in moderation. <laughs> the moderation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. every, everything's good in moderation, even water. You can die from drinking too much water. That's very true. Yeah, very scary if you think about it. At least I think it is. Yeah, 100%. Under nothing but the truth right there. Alrighty, thanks for those tips. I think everybody should hear. Um, guys, make sure to get all those damn phones out and check out Luminary. If you don't, you're losers. Make sure to check out Luminary and social media links down below in the links provided for you. Make sure to always support Wrap It Out. We're everywhere. Um, we're expanding. We got TikTok now, so I'll be posting TikToks um, very soon. We'll be posting more. I have two now on TikTok. I'll post more later. Um, and again, thank you, Luminary, for being here. Um, this is so exciting to get to do this. Um, so, guys, like she said, make sure to go to college if you feel like it. You should, anyway. Um, don't be idiots and smoke. Can't wait to see you guys on the next one I do. And as always, keep on supporting Rapid Out and these artists that I interview. And do not be idiots and not check her out. If you're not checking her out, you're not clicking that link, then suck a dick. See you guys on the next one I do. And a peace.